Ever wonder why some people seem to have their financial lives in order, while others are just one paycheck away from disaster? Today we dive into the world of personal finance student edition. It's not about being a math whiz or having a vault full of gold doubloons. Nope. It's about understanding the value of a dollar and how to make it work for you. You see, personal finance is all about managing your money, from budgeting to investing, and everything in between. For students, mastering these skills can be a game changer. It's about prioritizing needs over wants, building an emergency fund for those uh-oh moments, and understanding the implications of student loans. It's about being responsible with credit cards and exploring the benefits of saving and investing, even with limited funds. So buckle up as we navigate the confusing yet exciting world of personal finance. So, you've got some money. Now what? Let's talk budgeting. Picture your budget as a roadmap for your money. It guides you to your financial goals without getting lost in the wild realm of unnecessary expenses. First things first, tracking your expenses. The devil is in the details, they say, and this couldn't be truer for budgeting. Every coffee, every movie ticket, every late-night pizza delivery, track it all. This not only gives you a clear picture of where your money is going but also clues you in on spending habits you might not even realize you have. Now, let's move on to setting financial goals. Whether it's saving for a new laptop, a summer trip or just a rainy day, having a goal in mind gives your budget a purpose. It's like having a destination on your roadmap. It helps you figure out which turns to take and which ones to avoid. And then comes prioritizing spending. This is where you separate your from your wants. Sure, that new pair of sneakers might look awesome, but is it more important than textbooks for next semester? This is not about depriving yourself of fun and enjoyment, it's about making informed decisions and understanding the difference between I want this and I need this. Budgeting might sound like a drag, but it's actually your ticket to financial freedom. It's like having a personal financial advisor who knows you better than anyone else, helping you make smart money decisions. And here's a little secret, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Budgeting is a skill, and like any other skill, it gets sharper with practice. So start today, start now. Track your expenses, set your goals, prioritize your spending. Remember, a budget doesn't limit your freedom, it gives you freedom. And if you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, and subscribe to our channel for more financial tips for students. Let's face it, student loans can be a scary thing, but they don't have to be. They're like that monster under the bed when you were a kid, terrifying until you flipped on the light and realized it was just a pile of laundry. Understanding student loans is flipping on that light switch. Student loans, whether you want them or not, might become your unavoidable college sidekicks. They're supposed to help you out, get you through those ramen for dinner days. But like any sidekick, if you don't understand them, they can turn into your worst enemy. So, how do we make sure our sidekicks stay friendly? It's all about responsible borrowing. Now, I know that sounds like a phrase your parents would use, but hear me out. Responsible borrowing is like deciding how many cookies to take from the cookie jar. Sure, you could take all of them, but then you'd probably feel sick later. And trust me, a student loan hangover is not fun. Responsible borrowing means only taking what you need. It's understanding that these loans aren't free money. They're more like a rental service, and the longer you keep them, the more you end up paying. Understanding loan terms is like reading the fine print before signing a contract with a genie. You need to know what you're getting into. Are your loans subsidized or unsubsidized? What's the interest rate? When do you need to start paying them back? These are the questions you need to ask before signing on the dotted line. And then there's the big one, repayment options. This isn't a one-size-fits-all situation. Some people might want to pay off their loans as quickly as possible to minimize interest. Others might need a lower monthly payment to fit within their budget. It's about finding the best fit for your financial wardrobe. Managing student loan debt effectively is like being the conductor of your own financial symphony. It's about making all the different parts work together in harmony. It's not about how much you owe, it's about how well you manage it. So take control, be the maestro of your money, and make your student loans work for you, not against you. Remember, it's not about how much you owe, it's about how well you manage it. Money doesn't grow on trees, but there are plenty of ways to earn it if you're a student. Part-time jobs, for instance, offer not just a source of income but a wealth of experience. From learning the ropes of the workplace to honing those oh-so-important people skills, part-time jobs are a terrific way to dip your toes into the world of work. And the best part? You're getting paid to do it. But what if you're juggling lectures and assignments? How can you possibly add a job to the mix? Well, let's get creative. 
Ever thought about freelance work? Websites are always on the lookout for graphic designers, writers, translators, you name it. If you've got a knack for something, there's likely a paying gig out there for you. Or how about turning a hobby into a moneymaker? If you're a whiz in the kitchen, consider selling homemade cookies or cupcakes. Got a green thumb? Offer your gardening services around the neighborhood. And let's not forget about tutoring. If you excel in a particular subject, why not help others and earn some cash at the same time? Now, once those dollars start flowing in, it's crucial to manage them wisely. Remember, income is not a ticket to a shopping spree. It's a tool for financial stability. Start by budgeting for your expenses. Set aside money for necessities first, then allocate a portion for savings and a little for fun. And speaking of savings, it's never too early to start. Even a small amount set aside each month can lead to a hefty sum in the future. So consider opening a savings account if you haven't already. Investing in personal development is another smart move. Use part of your income to learn new skills or pursue interests. After all, knowledge is a resource that pays dividends throughout your life. So roll up your sleeves and get ready to make some money. Credit cards, they're not just for free airline miles and cash back. They're a tool to build your financial future. Now, if you're a student, you might be thinking, why should I care about credit? Well, your credit score is like your financial report card. It shows lenders how responsible you are with money. It can affect everything from the interest rates you receive on loans to your ability to rent an apartment or even get a job. So, how do you build credit as a student, you ask? It's quite simple. First, consider getting a credit card. But remember, this is not free money. It's a responsibility. Always pay your bills on time and in full if possible. Late payments can seriously hurt your credit score. Second, keep your balances low. It's recommended to use no more than 30% of your available credit limit. If your limit is $1,000, try not to carry a balance higher than $300. Third, monitor your credit reports. This can help you spot errors and signs of identity theft early. Many credit card companies offer free credit monitoring services, so take advantage of it. Now let's address some common misconceptions. Having multiple credit cards doesn't necessarily mean you have bad credit. It's how you manage these cards that matters. And no, checking your credit score does not lower it. That's a myth. Remember, good credit doesn't happen by accident, it takes planning and discipline. So start building your credit wisely today. Your future self will thank you. Saving and investing may sound like something your parents do, but it's never too early to start. Now you might think, hey, I'm a student, I don't have enough to save or invest. But let's debunk that myth right now. Every penny counts. And when it comes to your financial future, the earlier you start, the better. Think about this. If you put aside just $10 a week, that's over $500 a year. Now, imagine if you invest that money. With the magic of compound interest, your $500 could turn into $1,000 or even more over time. But where do you start? Well, firstly, make saving a habit. Whether it's a portion of part-time job earnings or the money you save by skipping that extra cup of coffee, put it aside. You can use online apps and tools to automate your savings, making the process even easier. Now let's talk about investing. It may seem complicated, but it doesn't have to be. There are plenty of beginner-friendly investment options out there. You could consider investing in low-cost index funds or exchange-traded funds. These are great for beginners because they spread your investment across a wide range of stocks, reducing risk. Remember, investing is a long-term game. There might be ups and downs, but don't let that discourage you. The aim is to grow your money over time, not become a billionaire overnight. So start small, dream big, and watch your money grow. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more financial tips and tricks. Remember, every like and subscribe helps us create more content for you. Thanks for watching.